My name is Max Revitz, and I'm the Product Development Director at Moog Music. Today, we're going to be talking about a new instrument we're excited about, the Moog Mavis. Mavis started out inspired by the Moog Workstatt, but we put a lot of work into expanding all of the ideas there, and Mavis has become a much more dynamic and flexible instrument. Um, let's take a uh, listen to the sound for a moment. So Mavis features a voice path that contains a harmonically rich oscillator that's capable of sawtooth and pulse waves. We have a traditional Moog 24 dB ladder filter, an ADSR, and then an LFO that features triangle wave and square wave shapes. Um, in addition to the voice path, we have quite a few utilities and interesting tricks that the patch bay is capable of. And another nice feature is that things like the VCO wave, the LFO wave, and then our modulation source mixtures can be cross-faded to get combinations of the two things so we can mix the envelope and LFO to modulate the filter, modulate the pitch, modulate the pulse wave of the VCO. Um, and in addition, you can mix the waves of the LFO and the oscillator. Um, looking at the patch bay, we have a two-channel mixer where one channel is mixed at unity gain and then the other channel has an attenuator so you can mix against it. Uh, these are labeled one and two and then you have a one plus two output, that's the mix output. We also have a, an attenuator in the panel. We have a two-channel mult for copying signals and then we have a sample and hold uh, that can be used in the patching process. Lastly, you might notice that the panel says fold on it, and we're excited to feature the first Moog wave folder that we've ever had on an instrument. Uh, this is a part of the external input, so you can use the fold input to feed external signals to be processed by the filter, as well as the wave folder. Um, let's take a moment to listen to the wave folder. So I'm gonna set the VCO wave to a sawtooth wave, and I'm going to patch the VCO output on the patch panel to the fold input. Once I've done this, now I can use the fold knob to listen to our wave folder. As you can hear, this allows for some timbres that aren't typically associated with Moog synthesizers, so we have an expanded sonic palette for users. Um, the wave folder can't be voltage controlled, but one interesting feature is it's DC coupled. So if we feed modulation signals into it, we're able to modulate the biasing of the folder. Um, we can listen to how that sounds by using our mixer. So what I'm going to do is patch the VCO output into the two input in the mixer and I'm going to patch the LFO output into the one input on the mixer. And then I'm gonna patch the one plus two output to the fold input. So now, if we add a little bit of folding, and I start turning up the one level attenuator, I'm going to add the LFO into the folder and we'll be able to hear some wave shaping. This is nice because we can get sounds that are somewhat similar to pulse width modulation, but they're accomplished via the sawtooth VCO instead of the pulse wave. Another nice new feature is the LFO now tracks volt per octave, so it can be used as a second oscillator in patches if you don't need to use it for modulation. We can listen to how that sounds, and so what I'm going to do is patch the volt per octave input to the mult so I can get two copies of it. 
and I'm going to feed one copy of the mulch back into the Volt Proactive input for the oscillator. And then I'm going to patch the second copy to the LFO rate, which is our Volt Proactive input for the LFO. So now, if I increase the LFO frequency into audio rate to tune it against our main oscillator, so we can get some really nice detuned dual oscillator patches to add a little bit of thickness to the oscillator signal. Another interesting thing is because the LFO tracks at volt per octave, we can accomplish some interesting FM tones with the filter and the LFO. We remove the input from the fold, then I'm going to wind up with si silence because the fold input disconnects the normalization between the VCO and the filter. So what I'm going to do is increase the resonance of the filter until it self-oscillates, generating a sine wave. And I'm going to feed the volt per octave that was going to the oscillator and instead feed it to the cutoff input to control the filter. And now if I set the VCF mod mix all the way to the LFO and start adding LFO modulation, because it's at audio rate, we can get some interesting West Coast sounds, not typically associated with Moog. So just another point in which we have an expanded sonic palette for customers to explore new sound territories. Another nice thing is because the LFO is used as an oscillator and features a triangle wave, if we just feed the LFO output into the folder, we can really hear the wave folder add harmonics to our LFO. So in addition to those features, we also have a sample and hold in the patch bay. The sample and hold can be nice for adding movement into your patches. And if I just go ahead and patch the sample and hold into the filter cutoff control, we can listen to how that sounds. And I'm going to patch my volt per octave signal back into the oscillator. So currently the sample and hold is being gated by the LFO, but one nice thing that we can do to synchronize everything is if I take the gate signal and feed it into the mult to get two copies of it. I can feed the first copy of the mulch back into the gate input. And then the second copy of the mulch can go to the gate input on the sample and hold. And now we can synchronize the movement of the sample and hold so that it only changes when a new note is generated by whatever you're using to sequence Mavis. And if that is too dramatic of an effect, we can also take the sample and hold output and patch it into the attenuator input and then patch the attenuator into the cutoff control. And now we can use the attenuator on the left side utility section to control the strength and depth of that random signal being applied to the filter. This can be really nice because it means that we can use three different things to modulate the cutoff a mixture of the envelope LFO and the sample and hold, so you can get some really dynamic modulation to move around some of the parameters on Mavis. 
So in addition to these things, we also have an updated keyboard that matches the Mother 32, and it also features a scale control where when it's fully counterclockwise, we have traditional volt per octave scaling, but that scaling can be increased to explore some non-traditional scales on the keyboard, and it can also be used to transpose sequences that you have coming in. And there's a glide control to make those changes immediate or allow you to slide to the note. So as you can see, Mavis is much more than meets the eye and through the flexibility of the patch bay, you're really able to achieve all sorts of interesting timbral zones with this synthesizer. Um, it also features a deck saver style lid that comes with it so that you can pop a lid on, throw it in your backpack and take it on the go. Um, and it's going to launch with a RRP of 399 euros for the market. So we feel that it provides a lower barrier to entry for people to have access to the Moog sound and features a high function to price ratio for customers. So yeah, that's the Moog Mavis. <laughs>